So the last thing in Flask I want to show you before we actually start building our application is how to use templates. So like I said in the last video, templates are a way to have all the HTML that we need for a particular endpoint in one file. That way we don't have to write HTML in the Python code here, which makes it ugly and unreadable and unmaintainable. So to use templates, the first thing I need to do is create a directory to hold the templates. So I'll create a directory here and I'll call it templates. And then I'll create a file. This will be a normal HTML file. And I'll call it example.html. So now let's write some HTML here. So let's say uh, head title is uh, example template. And then close out the head body. Uh, this is the example template. So pretty simple stuff here. I'll save this. And to actually use this template that I have created, I have to import a certain function, Flask. So the next thing I need to import is something called render template. So with this, I can pass in the name of the template I just created, example.html, and I can actually get it to run that HTML code. So I'll modify this home route and instead of passing back HTML that way, instead I'll pass back render template and I'll pass the name of the template. So example.html. And make sure the template file is in the templates directory because that's where render template is going to be looking. So now that I have that saved, if I go to the home page again, I get this is the example template. So if I modify the template a bit, and uh, let's say I'll add a paragraph here blah, blah, blah. I'll add a link, let's say, to Google. This is a link to Google. Uh, just simple stuff. And I'll add a H3. This is the end of the template. So I'll save that. And I'll refresh the page so the template uh, should have more in it. And now I see the blah, blah, blah. This is a link to Google. And this is the end of the template. So as you can see, having the HTML in this file makes it much easier. Uh, and in the Python code here in the Flask app, all I have to do is return this render template.example.html. And of course, because this is a template, not only could you have HTML, but you can have a little bit of um, logic in there. So I'd say the two main pieces of logic that you're going to be concerned with are conditionals and uh, loops. So conditionals are basically if statements. So if something is true, then display this part of the template. So display this HTML code. And if something else is true, then display this other HTML code. And a loop is basically saying like, given a list or you know just something to loop over, uh, repeat this section of HTML over and over again. And the other thing that would be in a template is replacing uh, variables. So basically you can say, I want this variable uh, here in the template and I'll pass in that variable from the Python code. So uh, let's uh, give an example of that. So for the first thing I'll do a variable. So I'll create another header tag and I'll say uh, the variable I passed in is and then to actually have the variable substitution I'll use two curly brackets and the name of the variable. So let's say um, my var. And then I'll have the H1 closing tags. Now, the nice thing about this templating language, which is Jinja, that is used by default in Flask, you can use a different one, but it's simplest to use Jinja because it's built in, uh, is that anything that is not HTML is uh, inside of brackets or some kind of brackets or percent or these double brackets here. And then the rest is HTML. So you don't have to do anything special for the HTML. You do something special for the the extra functionality given to you by Jinja. So you see I have my var surrounded by a curly brackets. So that is the extra functionality. So to pass in my var, I'll simply uh, have an argument here. I'll call it the same thing. So my var equals um, variable passed in. So I'll save this. And of course, the server is going to restart. So when I refresh the page, I see the variable I passed in is colon and then variable passed in. If I do something else like um, flask example and save that, 
then we see it changes. So this is great when you want uh, each page to be somewhat unique but have the same foundation. So you'll replace some things with variables. Another thing you're gonna have is if statements, like I said before. So I have my var here, so let me create a very simple if statement. So it's going to be curly bracket percent, and it's going to be surrounding the if statement on both sides. So I'll say if my var. Basically, I'm saying if my var actually exists, so I pass in my var, display what's directly beneath it. And then I'll have an else clause here. And I'll say no variable was passed in. And then to end this if statement, I'll do end if, just like that. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for my var. If the variable is there, it will display this line of HTML. The variable I passed in is whatever my var is. And if there isn't my var, it will say no variable was passed in. So now if I go to the page and refresh, and this is actually no space. Sorry about that. So no space there. And if I go back to the page and refresh, the variable is there, so it shows it. So now if I go here in the Python code and remove my var and take it back to the original and then refresh it, I now see no variable was passed in. So you can see that if statement at work there. So all you have to do is have the if block, the else clause is uh, optional, and then of course end if to uh, tell Jinja when your if statement has ended but it's fairly straightforward to use that. And finally, let's add a for loop to our code. So how about this? I'll pass in a list of links and I want to loop over them and simply say this is a link. So to do that, I'll create a block using the curly bracket percent and this is going to be four. And I'm going to pass in a list called links. So I'll say for link in links, do something. And then I'll have in for after that something. So let me add some space here. And that's something that I'm going to do is just create some links. So um, I'll do this. I'll leave that empty for now. Uh, here is a link. And what I want to go in between uh, these quotes here is the actual link. So I can actually have a variable here. So just like my var up here, this variable will be a little different in look, but it behaves the same. So it's going to be a link and this will loop over a list of links and for each link in that a list, it's going to substitute whatever value it is currently on inside of this uh, href and that will generate the link for me. So if I go here and I'll create a list of links, so I'll say uh, links equals, let's do YouTube, that's one link, bing.com, that's another link python.org. I don't know if that's the exact link for Python. And now I have one more. Let's say incado.com. So now if I pass in this list of links, I'll simply name it the same and pass in links. And now when I refresh the page, I see five links now. Uh, Google, YouTube, Bing, Python and Encanto. So let me just go to a couple. I'll go to uh, Python and I'll go to Bing. So I see Python here and Bing here. So we know they both work. So that's really it for templates. That's enough to get us uh, a long way in the application that we're going to create. Uh, we're going to be using um, the for loops and the variable substitution. But as you can see here, still not that many lines of code, but we have a lot of power that we've used already without having to write tons of code. So in the next video, I'll talk about uh, the two HTML files I created for our app and how we can get started using those.